my name is Catherine, and today I'm going to show you how to make my favorite cornbread and sausage dressing for Thanksgiving or for whatever. The first thing we're starting with that I have already done is I made a 9 by 13 pan of cornbread. You're going to need that. You can buy this at the store um, or make it from scratch, but either way you need the equivalent of one 9 by 13 pan of cornbread, which if you're buying it in 8 by 8 pans, it's probably two. The first step is to dry out your cornbread. And the way that we do that is we cut it into large chunks and then you put it on a baking sheet or two and you need to make sure that there's air around each piece and then you slowly dry this out in a 200 to 250 degree oven for as long as it takes. This took me a couple of hours today because my cornbread was very moist. It might be done in an hour, but what we're looking for is when you break one open, it's stale. We're essentially making like cornbread croutons. You want them to be dry and hard and very crusty and crunchy. You can do this at room temperature over several days if you don't wanna do it in the oven. And once, the, once that you've dried them out in the oven, you can just save them until you're ready to make your dressing. But the reason we do this is because the cornbread is going to absorb all the liquid from the dressing and it's just better <clears throat> if it's dry, otherwise it gets a little bit soggy. So the first step has already been done, but I really wanna emphasize like kind of hard as a rock. <laughs> you want them to be dried, but you don't wanna burn them. So I'm gonna set these aside. We will come back to these at the very end. Um, okay, so once you have your cornbread dried, you need to brown two pounds of breakfast sausage. And I'm talking like Jimmy Dean in the tube breakfast sausage. Two things I wanna show you here. Use a pan that's wide and flat if possible, you will brown better. And then I want you to actually brown the sausage. Don't just cook it till it's quote unquote, not in pink in the center anymore. We want this to be nice and browned because that is flavor, not only for the sausage, but what it leaves behind in the pan, let me show you. <clears throat> it leaves behind this kind of like, it's called frond is the technical term, but this is delicious flavor that's in this pan that we're gonna then turn around and use to saute our vegetables. So actually brown that sausage, not just cook it till all the raw is gone. So it'll take a few extra minutes, but saute it till it's nice and brown. Okay, the next component is our liquid base. I want you to make sure that you start with a bowl, your biggest bowl. Like this is about the minimum. If you can't get all this into the bowl and actually mix it, you're gonna have a big mess on your hands. So find a super, super big bowl. And into this bowl, we're gonna build our liquid base. Then we're gonna add our sausage. Then we're gonna add our sauteed vegetables. And last, we will add our cornbread. We'll combine it all together and then it'll get baked. So that's kind of the process. And all of this can be found in the recipe inside the blog post. The first thing we're gonna do is crack two extra large eggs into the bottom. And I'm going to start with the eggs. I always like to put the eggs in first because I wanna get them nice and mixed up on their own so that we don't have any weird egg yolk or white parts. So just take a whisk and you kinda wanna get it to that homogenous pale yellow stage. Just a few seconds. That's what we're looking for. So it's all one mixture. Next, you're gonna add one cup of half and half and four cups of chicken stock. If you have homemade chicken stock, by all means, this is the time to use it. If you don't, I don't want you to for one second feel bad about using store-bought chicken stock. It's a great convenience product. It's what I'm using, just go for it. So add all four cups. Then we're gonna add our seasoning, which is two teaspoons of kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And I just realized I only have a quarter, quarter teaspoon measuring spoon. So pardon me while I put eight of these in here. So two teaspoons of kosher salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm gonna give this a whisk before we add our herbs just to make sure that the eggs, the dairy, and the seasonings are all combined. All right, let's talk about the herbs that we're gonna use real quick. I have some chopped fresh parsley, which will just bring freshness to this very meaty, dairy, dense 
mixture. This will help brighten it up. I also have some chopped sage and chopped fresh thyme, and I wanna show you what these herbs look like before they get chopped. This is thyme, and you might be more familiar with this. I use this a lot when we do our roast chicken. It smells like um, the kind of thing that just reminds me of poultry in general, so it's a perfect add-in for this dressing. And then if you've never worked with sage, and honestly, Thanksgiving is about the only time that I, I work with sage. It has these really beautiful kind of soft, fuzzy leaves, and it has a, a very woodsy, distinctive flavor that is worth, like you, it's worth looking for. Yes, you can use dried, but the, the fresh sage is just, it's the best. And the way that you chop this is you just pluck the leaves off, stack them up, and then you can see I just chopped them into little pieces. So that's the sage, the thyme, and the parsley. All of these aromatics are gonna go into this mixture. Give it a final little whisk. And you can hear our sausage kind of sizzling over here. So we're just gonna add this in stages. I'm going to very carefully add the sausage first. Don't worry about any residual grease. It's gonna be okay. You do not need to drain this. And truly, if you have browned this sufficiently, there shouldn't be very much grease left over because all that brown has turned to flavor in the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna take my spatula, give this a stir to combine the sausage. And now in the same really dirty in a good way because it has all that flavor on it in the same dirty pan, put it back on the stove. We're going to melt a stick of butter. And this is what we're going to saute our celery and onions in. And what you wanna do as this melts and as you add the vegetables, is you're gonna see how this um, base of flavor on the top is gonna start, to, or on the bottom of the pan is gonna start to release. And this flavor that's in this pan will actually get picked up and incorporated into the vegetable mixture, which just adds to the flavor, adds to the richness, overall is a success. Okay, what I have is three cups of chopped onion, you know, just kind of chopped medium, and half as much, so a cup and a half of chopped celery. Pretty basic. Stir this around until the butter is melted and coating the vegetables. Get it to the stage where it looks pretty evenly um, doused, where everybody kind of has a little bit of butter on them. And then once everybody is covered in butter, kind of evenly distributed in your pan, and here's the trick to sauteing, leave it alone. Just leave it alone, set a timer for three to five minutes because you really want it to start to cook on the bottom. If you're constantly stirring it and moving it, it never has a chance to really cook on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm, we're not gonna stand here together and watch this saute. I'm gonna come back at the end of the saute step and show you where we are, then we'll finish our dressing and get it ready for the oven. Okay, welcome back. Take a look at our vegetables. They have sauteed, and a couple of things I want you to notice. The brown on the bottom has totally scraped up and incorporated into these vegetables. These vegetables are definitely not raw because we don't want raw onion and celery, but they're not browned yet. They're that in-between soft, flavorful stage without taking on a browning, and that's what we want. So this is where we're gonna stop our sauteing. I'm going to add this directly to the bowl that has our egg mixture, and our cooked sausage. All that flavor. And then we're gonna just combine all this. So now what we have is a sausage dairy vegetable mixture that's very wet. And that's a good thing because this is what all that dried out cornbread is going to um, absorb. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna put on some gloves because I wanna show you um, a pretty messy step. If I were at home, I probably would just use my hands 
and then wash them, but I don't have a sink, so we're just gonna do this like this. Take the cornbread cubes and just put them directly into the bowl as they are without doing anything to them. And this is where you're gonna have to kind of use your best judgment a little bit based on your particular cornbread. We want to break this up so that we don't have, you know, bricks of cornbread, but what we don't wanna end up on the other end of that spectrum is we don't want mush. We want this to have a little bit of texture in the finished product and that has everything to do with how you break these up. I am just kind of taking each cube and because these are so stale, kind of dividing it, I don't know, I'm just crumbling it until it's largish chunks, smallish cubes, I don't know, and continue to kind of move it around. And the ones that are down in the liquid will start to break apart a little, a little easier. And you just go through until you've kind of obliterated each cornbread brick. And the, um, the place for error here is to take it too far. Um, the first time I made cornbread dressing, I got a little bit overzealous and ended up with something that was like um, kind of very mushy. I mean, it tasted amazing because the flavor here is great, but I just, that mushy kind of, it's almost like cornmeal texture is not what I want in a finished Thanksgiving dressing. Okay. Here is about where you wanna live. These are nice size chunks. They're about the same size as the sausage chunks. And it's the kind of thing that like when you take a bite with your fork, you're definitely gonna have some texture, but it's not gonna be soupy or soppy or wet or gross. And as this sits here, let me press this down. You can see this liquid, but I'm telling you, this is gonna sit and absorb all that goodness and then bake in the oven. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna remove my gloves. We're gonna get this ready for the oven. And you definitely want a nice sized baking dish, probably at least three quarts. Transfer this to your baking dish carefully. And see all that good flavor. And this is going to fill up this baking dish in a good way. Use your spatula to kind of make it even across the top. And then if for some reason um, you end up with like dressing that's kind of mounding, if you have a smaller baking dish, just use your hands and press it in and it will kind of take the shape of your baking dish if it's a little bit smaller. And at this point, um, here's the good news. You could definitely put this in the oven now but what's even better is you can let this sit in your refrigerator for two or three days before Thanksgiving. It's fine. It's going to just absorb all that liquid and then it will be ready for the oven. The most important baking tip I can give you for dressing is it is very rare that you are going from just making dressing and going straight to the oven. That's not how my Thanksgiving works. My Thanksgiving looks something like, I made this three days ago, it's cold in the fridge, it's going into an oven with some sweet potatoes, some green beans, and maybe something else. Hear me say, if you go from cold dressing to an oven full of other side dishes, it could take an hour and a half, maybe two hours, for this to sufficiently warm and get hot all the way through and cook. Remember, we've got that raw egg in there. We've got all that dairy. This doesn't just need to like heat up. This needs to cook until it's hot in the center. In the context of Thanksgiving, when your oven is full and things are coming straight out of the refrigerator, keep that in mind and allow the timing for that. This is dense and heavy and can take a really long time to cook. PSA over. All right, so in our case, what we're gonna do is we're going to go straight from making this dressing to putting it into the oven, which means it's, it's hot right now, it's not cold, and it's going to be the only thing in my oven. So it's going to bake for like an hour, maybe an hour 15. So I'm gonna do that. I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven, but this is our dressing ready to bake. 
Our cornbread dressing just came out of the oven. It looks amazing, it smells to die for. I wanna show you a couple ways to know when it's done. Obviously, we're looking for a beautiful golden crust on top. And in the middle, um, the old school way is like just stick your finger in there and make sure it's hot, but a little bit more elegant is to kind of use a fork and a knife to kind of, you wanna, I can't really show you this. You wanna split it open and you want it to be dry all the way through, which means the egg has fully cooked. If you split it apart and there's any liquid that like rushes into that cavity, it's not done. Your eggs have not cooked sufficiently. And I'm telling you, this can take up to 75, 90 minutes in an oven all by itself. So just allow a lot of time. The good news is when it comes out of the oven, if you cover it in foil and put some like dish towels over it, it will stay warm on your counter probably for up to an hour. The other thing that I wanna share with you about this dressing, I know how crazy this sounds. This literally could feed 24 people as a side dish on Thanksgiving. People tend to think that a casserole, a nine by 13, yields like eight to 12 servings. And I'm here to tell you, in no scenario would eight to 12 people eat all of this dressing. When we did our test run of this and we served it to our full staff at Hurley House, we maybe, maybe ate half of this and easily, we did the math, you easily could feed 24 people with this side dish, assuming that there are other things that they're putting on their plate. This is the only thing you're eating, maybe fewer than 24. But I can't imagine a Thanksgiving scenario where you need to double this. <laughs> like, this is the dressing that will feed a crowd. So just, just, you're gonna be fine with a single batch. Unless you feed 60 people for Thanksgiving, you don't need to double it. Okay, so this is our dressing. It's, it's ready to go, it's delicious. I hope you enjoy it this holiday season.